Hey guys, welcome back to Mini Bike Mike's Garage. So once again, we're on the old Corvair van. Today's video, today's episode, we're gonna kind of bounce around, do different, whole bunch of different things. Uh, we work, we work on a glove box latch. We work on a speedometer cable. Uh, we actually swap uh, the speedometer out. Uh, I had a subscriber, Greg, who sent me a new cluster because this one has the needle broken on the speedometer, and so we wind up swapping that out and. Uh, you'll see me put the electric fuel pump on. Now, when you get to that point, for all you safety-minded guys out there, please bear in mind, the pump is just, right now, the way I have it configured, is just emergency case only. Uh, we're running the engine off of the mechanical pump, and if for some odd reason it happens to quit on us while we're still in the working on it, working on this van phase, I can just real quickly hook up the electrical pump. Now, I've actually purchased a complete brand new fuse block, wiring harness, and so forth. So at some point, this entire thing is going to get completely rewired. And when it does, then I will put the correct wiring for an electric fuel pump, you know, inertia switch. And they actually make a little control box that uh, hooks into like the coil for like a tach tachometer wire. So if the engine's not running, it shuts down the electric fuel pump. So in case you're in an accident or whatever, it just doesn't keep running. So anyway, enjoy the video. Don't don't be too hard on me. Like I said, I just kind of threw that pump in there just to have it, just in case we need it. Um, the way I have it wired anyway, its location will stay where it's at. But uh, let me know your thoughts, what you think about the old van, how it's coming along, and. Uh, just try and keep up with me as I, I bounce around from project to project. In the last video, I was working around the engine compartment. We changed a belt on it. We changed a fuel pump and a couple of the little things, cleaned up some wiring. And in the process of changing that fuel pump, I found out that the aluminum housing that the fuel pump drops into, this is the fuel pump. It's got this shaft. It drops down into a hole in the engine block, and then there is a set bolt that tightens up against it. Well, that aluminum mount on the engine is cracked. Uh, I felt like the fuel pump had a little bit of play in it and got looking at it and it's got some cracks. And I'm not 100% sure. I don't think I did it. I might have over tightened that or didn't have it in there correctly when I tightened it up. But I went back and watched the video and when I pulled the old fuel pump, when I pulled this fuel pump out, you can see, I believe you can see the cracks in the housing then. So I think whoever installed that fuel pump might have started the process and maybe I finished it. Anyway, because of that, everybody's like, just run an electric fuel pump. Just, just Why don't you just keep the electric fuel pump on there? And I already had that in my mind that I was, was probably going to do that to, this is the electric pump that I had on the engine while I was waiting for the new uh, stock pump to come in. So I think I'm going to go ahead and hook this up, have it wired, have hoses on it, have it all ready to go. And then if the new pump, something in that fails, then all I've got to do is just disconnect the filter, plug in this. And, and be ready to go. So I'm trying to think of where I want to put this. And for some odd reason, I want to hide it. I don't know if it's because it's bright red or what, but I got looking up under here. And I think if I drill a couple holes in this section right here, I can mount that pump right up underneath that channel and then have a couple lengths of hose that I can feed down. And there is a big empty cavity here underneath the battery. I can just run them down there. They can sit there until they're needed. And then we can pull them out and plug them into the fuel lines. Um, the other thing I'm thinking through on is, okay, I've got this electric fuel pump. How do I turn it on and off? I don't want it to come on with the key especially if I don't have it hooked up to the system and just have it you know running all the time. So we're going to have to put it on a switch. Well, I don't really, even, even though I'm highly considering cutting the top off of this van, and for some reason I'm having a hard time making any other modifications to it. I, I kind of want to leave it the way it is. That's, that's kind of why I'm trying to hide this to make it inconspicuous. And 
So I don't want to add a bunch of switches and things to the dash. So I got thinking, we took the heater box out of this, and there is a wire that went to the blower motor fan on that heater box. And there is the control still up in up on the dash. I'm wondering, I'm hoping maybe it'll work. Maybe I can just when I want to run this electric fuel pump, turn the turn the defrost on and it pumps gas. So I don't know. The wire's right there, so you can see I've taken the covers back off. I'm gonna we're gonna hook some power or hook uh, this pump to that wire, go up front and see if it actually activates this thing. So this is the wire that I was talking about that plugged into the blower motor on the, the heater box right here. Um, we're going to hook it to this fuel pump somehow, some way, and see if it will come on. I'm trying to protect things from being shorted out here. That's why I've got all the cardboard and the, I've got so many bare spot here. I don't want anything to short out. Okay, I need a ground. That's about that bolt hole right there. Okay, so it's not running now. Uh, let's see, can I reach the all right here we go there's the first click nothing seems like it happened that's second speed nothing's happened aha there it is i don't know if you guys can hear that put my mic on it hear the pump pumping Perfect. That's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to grab the camera and take, grab it and go around to the dash and see you can see what I'm doing. I don't know how well this is really going to show up, and you, you certainly aren't going to hear it, but this is the heat control unit. Um, it's got three little buttons here for opening and closing doors and so forth, cables, and then up here, was the switch for turning it on uh, the fan to different speeds and that's that's off there was one speed a second speed and in the third speed position yeah like I said I doubt you guys can hear that but it the pump came on yeah so I think that's what I'm gonna do um, hook that to this switch and then if we do need to go to the electric pump just need to know I need to flip that over and then start it up and we should be good to go. But yet it's shut off if we're not using it. So, yep, I think that's what I'm going to do. We're going to go back to the back and, and mount that pump underneath that channel first. Well, I don't think it has to be in any place super particular. Somewhere around right there. Let's see if we can get a couple holes drilled. That's going to work. Yeah, I can see. Well, putting the bolt in it might be a trick, but I can see the hole.
There we go. So yeah, so we'll just throw some nuts on those. But before I mount that, I want to go ahead and put some long pieces of hose on it and make sure I've got it going the right direction, flow. Yeah. So I'm going to go grab a, some hose and get that all put on there before I get it stuffed up underneath there. So I've got length of hose. I've got a really long one over there. I'll have to trim it down. Got those attached. Let's see if we can get some hardware up in here. Sorry for the noise. Mm, I don't know if I like the way that one sticks up because I still have to put that cover on. What about this one and catching the door? No, that one's going to be fine. I may change out the hardware that I just put in there, but you get the idea of what I'm doing. So this will hook right here where the filter's at. So I'll cut that a little long, and then this line hooks where I had it originally hooked where at that T to feed the carburetors. So I may zip tie that up there or something just to kind of hold it out of the way and stick this one down in that cavity. All right, so I need to go get some electrical wire, some red wire, and run from hot wire the pump, run it up through, and hook it to that heater control switch wire. All right, I feel pretty good about that. So I've got the fuel pump hidden up underneath this channel. I did go ahead and put some lower profile headed uh, bolts on there. Uh, I've, for right now, I've just got the hose kind of tucked down out of the way here, and then I've got one up underneath this cavity here someplace. There it is and the power wire running to it. I've got power ran up to that, uh, the fan control switch. So we'll leave that until that switch just quits working. Uh, at some point, I think I'm going to completely rewire this van. The, the wiring up underneath the dash and the little glass fuse block, uh, it's everything is a disaster. There's just wires hanging down everywhere that I have no idea where they go. Everything seems to work. So for right now, we're going to leave it as is until it catches on fire again. But uh, I, got to, I have a feeling that down the road, we're going to do a complete rewire on this. Um, you may notice that I don't have the covers back on the engine yet. One of the things that I did not get done in the last video was the speedometer cable. And we found out that the actually the speedometer itself had some issues. And I got to say, you dudes are awesome. Uh, I mentioned in that video that the the cluster up there for the speedometer, I believe, is the exact same thing in the early model, the 60 through 64 Corvair cars. And two of you guys reached out to me and said, hey, I've got one of those. If you want it, you can have it. And uh, so I've got one coming uh, from Greg over in Ohio. He's sending me one, and then I've got a backup one. I told the second guy, hey, I've, I've got one, you know, but if for some odd reason this one doesn't work or whatever, I'll get with you. But thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. So uh, I'm not going to put the covers back on because we may revisit that whole speedometer cable thing, uh, and hopefully maybe next week I'll have the that new cluster to put in there, and we'll add that to this video. video. I'm not sure if it'll make it or not. But, uh, yeah. All right, so I think I'm ready to – move on to something else so hopefully if the uh the stock pump fails we've got a backup plan the next project i want to tackle on this corvair van is the glove box door i've got the door uh the hinge works great the lock or catch is is in here but the holder that holds this thing in place is missing uh it's been missing ever since i've owned the van Luckily, the little screw is still here, so I've got that, but I'm not sure where or why someone, they must have robbed it for another project or something. Now, 
you can go buy this little hold this little hold down strap thing. It's probably less than five bucks online, but I've got a few minutes this morning. Uh, and I was looking at what kind of project I could tackle, and I thought, you know what? Let's just see if we can make one. All it is is just a strap that that kind of comes up, over, and back down, and it has a hole in it, and that little screw um, holds it in there. And so basically, just kind of wedges this thing in place. And so I got looking at it, and this is the one inch OD 063 wall round tube that I use for fixing exhaust on CT 70s, uh, that rotted spot. And it fit perfect in this little cutout of the sheet metal on the, uh, on the glove box door here. And it's big enough ID that it, it's, it fits around the latch. Now the latch itself has a couple spots here that you got to work around. You know, you've got this, it's not just perfectly round. It's got this little bump, and then you've got the, the catch itself that you have to work around. So um, the plan is to cut a piece of this round tubing, and it looks like we're going to need it to be... Uh, better hold that up. Hang on just a second. Let me redo that. I want to make sure it's tight. You don't want to go too short, or the, this thing will just flop up and down. If I go a little long, I can always trim it off. But I got a measurement of one inch and 145 thousandths, so somewhere between an inch and an eighth, an inch and three sixteenths. So I'll probably cut this round tube just a tad bit long. I've, I found that I measured across here, and it was about a half of an inch wide. So I cut a half inch piece of little sheet metal that's the same thickness as the tube, about 60 thousandths. And I'm going to weld that across there. And then basically I'm going to cut out the front and the back side and just create a little arch to fit down over that. And I went ahead and already have got it made up. And this is the piece. This is what it looks like. Now this one's kind of ugly, and uh, but it works. So I got a little overzealous in my cutting out my side, and, but that's not a big deal. So you can see I just took that flat stock, welded it across that round tube, and then just kind of set it on there and eyeballed for that hole, marked it, and, and drilled that out. And so that just sits down over top of that latch. You take your little screw here and As you tighten down, it pulls the latch up. The piece that I cut now has got pressure against the back side of the door. And that keeps that all intact. And I just saved myself five bucks, fellas. <laughs> and there it is. Nice to have that where it's not rattling around. That's a pretty good fix. Uh, I don't have a glove box, but at least I've got a door that closes. It's a couple days later, and a package has arrived at my shop, and it is from subscriber Greg over in Ohio. He saw the last video on the Corvair van where I talked about the speedometer was broken and that the needle was actually off of the speedometer and he reached out to me and he said hey you know you mentioned in the video that that is similar to a uh, the the cluster of an early model Corvair car and my dad collected all kinds of Corvair parts and he said I think I have one of those and he sent me a bunch of pictures if you are in the Corvair community and watching this video and you're looking for a bunch of parts for Corvairs, he had glass, he's got doors, he's got engines, uh, transmissions, 
Greg, you did a fantastic job packaging this up. He's there's foam, but but Greg has is looking to move all this stuff that his dad had collected, and he offered it to me. And quite honestly, it was it, I'd love to have it, but he's got a lot of stuff, and I just don't have the room to to store it. His price was he had a fantastic price on it. So if you are in the Corvair community and you're looking to, to score a bunch of, of parts and get them at a really decent price, hit me up in the comments and I will hook you up with Greg because he would certainly like to, to move those things. Wow, did he do a great job packaging this or what? Yeah, I think that now I don't I won't need this this cow part here that's on the top. I can remove that. Looks like it just has a couple little screws right here. But the rest of that looks to be just like what I have. And as you can see, he's got the his still has the needle in it. But the lights, the wiper, even the lighter, I have a lighter. This must be, oh, this has fallen out over here for the indicator for the, uh, for what gear it's in. So I'll have to maybe do a little, little work there, but that's still going to be better than what I got. Oh, yeah. So we'll have to rehook, unhook the cable on mine and probably hook it to his. Look, they even, I I believe it even has a neutral indi uh, neutral safety switch on it. Kind of interesting. All right, I think I want to hook up a cable in this and spin it with a drill and just kind of check and, and see if this works. Before I do that, let's see, I'm going to see what his note here says. Uh, Mike, I hope you will be able to put this to good use in your Greenbrier van. Let me know if you need anything else. I can look as my dad has a ramp side pickup, and I assume many of the parts are the same. Awesome. And then he's gone ahead and give me some other information on how to contact him. So, Greg, thank you very, very much. Um, like I said, if you have somebody, know somebody, or if you're looking for a, a bunch of Corvair parts, let, let me know and, and we'll get you hooked up with Greg. Um, so one of the things I also mentioned is I bought a speedometer cable seven years ago from Clark's Corvair Parts. And it just, it's been in that van ever since. And I, a couple days ago, I, I didn't film it, but I pulled out the old speedometer cable, removed it from the van. And I was going to go ahead and install this one in preparation for getting this. and I something's up with it. I'm not really sure what's going on, but it, it's a similar speedometer cable as what you see on the CT70. Uh, just has a little square ends that that fit up in the speedometer, and then that that screws on. This end has a stop on it, so you know the cable can only go in so far. So you push that up in there, but look how far this end sticks out the end of this sheet. I mean, it's probably an inch and a half longer than, than it needs to be. I, and I, I tried, I took this back to the transmission and, and put it in and it, it hits. I mean, only this small section here goes in and I got all this sticking out and I can't get it. I can't screw it, you know, can't tighten it on there. I don't know if the sheath has shrunk over the years and the cable stayed the same length. But I've ordered another cable from Clark's Corvair Parts, and we're going to see how that works. And but yeah, anyway. So so I went ahead and attached the speedometer cable to the back of the speedometer of this cluster, and we're just going to try and operate it with a drill here. Ah, 
Yeah, it does work. And the odometer is spinning also. Sweet. So that's a that's a good working speedometer that we have. So yeah, so the next step is I think pull this cluster out of the, the van that we have and see if we can get this to mount up in there. It's a couple days down the road and I'm back in the shop today and I'm looking at this speedometer that I got from Greg, this cluster. And unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be a direct bolt in to the van that I have. Uh, it's very similar, but as you can see on this one, the gear shift lever is down below the cluster here, where on the van, it's over on the side. And the van cluster has two screws, a screw that goes actually through this bezel or through this the chrome outer piece here, goes through it here and here, where this cluster had a couple clips. These like spring clips and then it has some hardware here underneath. So where it like went through the dash. So I don't think, you know, I can probably swap this out, the shifter out, but I don't think this is going to just bolt right in there. So now I'm thinking it looks like you can take out a few screws and take this center part off of the rest and hopefully maybe those will swap. Yeah, I think if I take everything from here up off, that should include the speedometer and the fuel gauge, and then I can put that on the cluster that's out there. So now I need to go out and see if I can get all of this out of the van. So yeah, see, see how you can see how the screw goes through here, and then there's another one right over in this area and are actually going through this part, which they don't on the other one, and then see how the shift, shift lever is actually mounted to the side and not below like the cluster I got from Greg. So the rest of that is all this very, very similar. I just gotta figure out how to get this out so we can swap that back, the part on the back. All right, I'm gonna apologize that the lighting is not any better here. So I've disconnected the battery. So make sure that we don't short anything out. And I have taken the two screws out of the bottom of the piece here. And I'm seeing that there is a, I don't know if you guys can really see that. The sheet metal here is actually bent. I don't know if that's a factory bend. Or someone did this just this whole piece here looks just kind of janky and this looks like somebody's already kind of eh, you can't see it's too dark got too many shadows but it looks like the dash back here has actually been kind of bent I don't know if I move that lever if that moves It's coming out on that side. That side it's coming out, but we're caught up with the shift lever mechanism here. All right, I'm gonna have to put you guys down because I'm gonna need both hands. Okay, you can kind of see it. I don't know if you can see it. There's a a pin on the back of the spin on the back of the cluster that goes in a hole up there. So that's kind of what holds it in place up there. I gotta get that out. I gotta, I'm not clearing something right here. Well, you use a big enough screwdriver and you can kind of pry it all loose. I, I may never, ever get it back in there. There are two screws right here that hold the, the shift lever mechanism to the cluster. I think if I can get those out, then that will release the rest of this. What's holding it in is, is the shift cable and everything. And I really don't want to go disconnecting all that. I don't have to. So I'm going to see if I can get a little stubby Phillips screwdriver in there to take those out. And then hopefully that will release it. I still may need to like disconnect the wiring for the uh, window washers or the wipers and the, the lights over there. 
Well, I feel like that was about three times more work than what it really needed to be, but I got it out of there. Man, now would be a great time to rewire all this and get rid of all that janky wiring. You can tell where someone has rewired the key switch over there. That little thing right there is a son of a gun. All right, let's take this in to the bench and see how it compares to the other one. All right, they do look to be basically the same unit. I think I have to take this shift mechanism off of this one to be able to get, or at least take, I should have taken this bolt out. I probably could have got it just by taking that bolt out. All right, there we go. Let's move that out of our way. That will, should allow us to get to this. Sockets too thick to fit up in there. All right. Oh boy. <laughs> There's what we needed. That is it, fellas. Okay, and I think I'll even take this glass. To, oh, okay, no, that part. Well, we'll take that, and I think this if this glass comes out, or plastic, whatever that is, we'll take that because I think it's actually broken or cracked on the one in the van. All right, now we're going to do the same thing to this one. and it fell out. Right. Yeah, the needle is just, there was the needle laying right here. Oh, there's a couple bits of it. Yeah, it's it's broke, unfortunately. I don't know how, how that got broke, but. Set that off to the side. Broken needle. All right, so. Oh. Oh, that's the cover for the turn signal. Let's see if this will come out of here. See, I still got uh, some of the switches in this one. This one still has the wiper. All right, so there's that piece. See, and this, this glass is broke or cracked. So let's get rid of that one. Greg's down in there. You know, I guess if I was really redoing this, I'd paint that while I've got it out, wouldn't I? But I'm not going to. What's it look like? Oh, it looks fine. You know what I do need to do, though? I probably need to take that glass out and give it a good cleaning before I put it in there while it's got it's got dirt and crap on it. There it is, I think. I think there's a little pin right here that was holding it up. Let's try this now. All right. 
right, that's better. There we go. Now we're now we're cooking. There we go, fellas. Clip fell out again. Seems like I'm missing one. I don't know where that other screw went, but... Awesome. <laughs> Greg, there you go. Thank you very, very much. Now, now I just got to see if I can get it back in. Back in the van. All right, I'm going to go ahead and call that for today. Wrap it up. We'll pick this back up tomorrow. But I've got the light switch put back in. I've got the ignition plugged back in. I've got the shift lever put on there. Um... I've got the speedometer cable should be coming tomorrow or maybe today. So I'm going to leave this out in case it's easier for me to put it, screw it on with it, uh, with the cluster out. So yeah, we'll pick this up tomorrow. I got a package from Clark's Corvair parts today. <clears throat> I'm going to assume it's the speedometer cable. I think that's the only thing I currently have op or ordered with them. There we go. That looks much better. All right. So, <clears throat> old cable here on the left, new cable on the right. They, they're sticking out about the same. Old cable on the left, new cable on the right. See that difference? See how much that's sticking out? So this one should work just fine. Now, real quick, real funny story. About 15 minutes, 20 minutes after I got the old speedometer housing pulled out from underneath the van, probably 10 different clips holding it along the frame, spent quite a while getting it out. <clears throat> I thought to myself, well, why didn't I just pull out this center part right here and run it down the, the sheath, the cable that's in the in the, the van? I was like, well, okay, too late now. I've already taken it all out. A couple days later, I had dinner with uh, my mom and dad, my parents, and dad watches, they watch the videos. And dad asked, he goes, why didn't you take the center out of that speedometer cable and run it down? I was like, yeah, I, I know, dad. I thought about it. 15, two minutes too late. So, but anyway, so we should be good to go with this one. Well, I've got the new cable ran front to back. I've actually got it hooked up on the transaxle back there. Now I'm not going to hook it up here until I get the dash put back in. I don't think I've got enough length to pull it and hook it and then still be able to get in to put the wiring all back together in the back of the dash or the cluster there. So I've got to try and get that reinstalled, and then hopefully I can plug that into the back. Well, I've got it all buttoned back up. Had one casualty. Uh, you see that wire hanging down over there? That was that was that horn button, that that unknown button right there. That wound up being the horn. Apparently, this doesn't work. Well, during all that, I ripped that wire loose. But oh well. Since we're going to rewire the whole thing eventually anyway, uh, that was a whole lot of work for <laughs> very little move it, movement forward. But I want to see if the speedometer cable works. So best way to do that, let's take it outside and take it for a spin. Well, this probably isn't the best idea in the world since it's raining outside and I've got a bare sheet metal body on this thing. But oh well, sometimes things are just a little more important. You want to find out. I want to see if this speedometer is going to work. If it's noisy, I apologize. I don't. I do not have the cover on the engine back there. Wrong way.
no mirrors on this thing. Panel van, I can't see a thing. I think it's going to work. Well, fantastic. That's an item we can mark off the list. And I think I actually got a working fuel gauge now. The, the other fuel gauge didn't seem to be operating. But this one, I believe it's actually working. So that's a bonus. Thanks, Greg. I can't, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. Uh, Greg from Ohio sent me that other cluster that I could get this out of. And I think I mentioned it in another spot in the video. Hit him up. If you're in the Corvair community and you're looking for more Corvair parts, because he's got plenty of stuff he'd like to get, he'd like to move along to somebody else. So, all right, let's see what else we can get into. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. I think we've got I don't know maybe 35, 45 minutes worth of content, and I hate to make videos over 45 minutes. Uh, that's about the all the attention span I have to watch. So I'm sure you guys do too, but. We're going to have a lot more videos on this van. Obviously, we've got a lot more work to do, so I appreciate you sticking with me and the content on it. Um, we'll get back to mini bikes as, you know, as soon as we can, but uh, I think we're going to have a few more videos on this. If you're looking for any mini bike mic merch, uh, T-shirts, hats, or whatever, hit me up with an email, ct70help at gmail.com, and I'll get you the information on where you can, how you can pick that up. But again, as always, appreciate you watching the videos, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.